idea what I was like at school. I was very quiet at school. I was very bookish. I was good at school. I was in top class for everything. I wasn't uh, popular at school. I didn't have many friends. And at various points, I didn't have any friends. All I need to tell you is this. At the age of 12, I invited my maths teacher to my birthday party. <laughs> It wasn't even my birthday party, it was my sister's birthday party and my mum said I could bring a friend if I liked and she is who I chose. And she came and she was an absolute delight. She made sure the cake was all evenly divided. <laughs> at the age of 14, we did this thing at school, they called it a career questionnaire. They sat us in front of the one computer that our school had at the time. The keyboard was the size of a fucking tabletop. <laughs> Space bar. <for>. And... <laughs> Individually, we were to answer several questions with yes or no answers. And at the end, the computer program would spit out what it thought you should do for a living. So I sat there, answered several questions, yes or no answers. And at the end, the job it thought I should do was a long distance lorry driver. <laughs> now, I can't remember what those questions were, but I've been having a think and I've come up with three. Do you like pasties? <laughs> yes. Do you like Yorkies? Yes. Would you be okay with one brown arm? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, a few years ago, a girl from school emailed me via my website, and I'd like to read that email to you now, if I may. So it starts, Hi, Sarah. Before you think, who the hell is this writing to me? I used to be Lynn Turner. Well, I suppose in a way I still am, but my name changed when I got married, not just my waistline. I just had to write and get in touch after hearing you on Radio 5 and then spotting you on ITV. You look great, you've hardly changed, how are you doing? I've just been looking at your website, it all looks amazing. I was watching the TV on Saturday night with my husband and two boys and you appeared. Thanks, Sarah, you've actually done my street cred, the world of good. My boys, aged 11 and 10, are very impressed that mum went to school with someone famous. We were talking about it all night. Do you ever get back home to South Shields? I hardly ever get back there. I moved down south when I was 21. I'd met my husband, a southerner, and we set up home in Romford. He travels with his job, so we've been lucky enough to live all over the world. We next moved to Denmark, where I gave birth to Giles, and then moved on to Rome, where I gave birth to Harvey. Family complete, we moved to the Middle East. We moved from there to Monaco. <laughs> we moved from there to Monaco, then The Hague, followed by a three-year stint back up north in Jesmond before eventually settling down in leafy Hampshire. We've lived here for four years now, so life is as settled as it gets. I decided I had to do something else with my life and went back to work last year as a teaching assistant. I'd really love it if you could find the time to write and get in touch, or if you're down in this neck of the woods, it'd be great to see you again. Take care, Lynn. She was one of my bullies. <laughs> but she wasn't a punchy bully, she was a psychological bully. She to try and fuck me up, I suppose. I remember one time she came up to me in the playground and she said to me, uh, did you write into Just 17 this week? And I went, no. And she went, oh, well, thought you had. And off she flounced. So on the lunch break, I went to the newsagent and I bought a copy of Just 17. Now, if you don't know what Just 17 is, it's a magazine that you read until you're 15. <laughs> if you're still reading it at 17, something has gone horribly wrong. <laughs> because now you should be reading more magazine and learning about the positions of the fortnight. <laughs> Just so you know, I've got a wheelbarrow now. Doesn't look anything like that. <laughs> so I'm standing outside of the news agent with a copy of Just 17. I flicked to the problem page, and on the perimeter of the problem page are all problems about sex, and I knew she wouldn't think that was me. But right dead centre, right in the middle, was a problem entitled, Am I a Boring Square? She made me buy my fucking insult. <laughs> so I replied to her email. Now you've got to be careful with this, you've got to be careful because I might have misremembered things, I might have been overly sensitive at the time, but also I didn't want to give her anything that she could fling back in my face and say you're wrong. So this is all I sent, just the one line. Hello Lynn, to be honest I probably won't reply any more fully than this as I don't remember you very favourably. <laughs> What 
was hoping for at school was like an ugly duckling revelation moment. We all know the story of the ugly duckling, don't we? That becomes the beautiful swan. So it was never an ugly duckling, was it? It was always a perfectly lovely signet. <laughs> Just what the book should have been called. The perfectly lovely signet and his rubbish time with the shitty ducks. <laughs> People think the moral of that story is don't judge something because it might be wrong. I don't think that's the moral. I think the moral is don't be mean to anything because it might grow up to steal your chips and break your arm. <laughs> but if not an ugly duckling moment, there may be a plain Jane super brain moment. Now, the only people who are going to get that reference are about my age and watch Neighbours growing up. <laughs> if you don't know who plain Jane super brain was, she's just a girl called Jane who wore glasses. And then one day, they took her glasses off her. <laughs> Put her in a taffeta dress, and then everyone wanted a fucker. <laughs> Even Helen Daniels. <laughs> That's not how glasses work, though, is it? It's not how glasses work. It's not, is it? You haven't all been looking at me tonight, going, oh, no, I really don't fancy her at all. Fucking hell, I would. Fucking hell, I would. <laughs> oh, no. Not even a twinge. Not even a twin. Fucking hell, I'd shove it in any hole she'd let us. <laughs> That's not how glasses work. I've got a good duck fact for you. You might not know this. The duck penis is a corkscrew. So if you ever see a couple of ducks trying to have sex in the park, just give them a hand. Just give them a hand. <laughs> and you know when he's finished, because his wings will go up like that. <laughs> One thing I hadn't realised is it became a bit more known and a bit more in the public eye is that in some ways that can feel a lot like being back at school because now anybody who wants to can tell me that they think I look like shit and regularly do. Now obviously social media is one of the main culprits uh, but for me another culprit has always been women's magazines. I hate women's magazines because I don't think they lift us up. I think they push us down. They show us an unrealistic ideal of what they expect us to be rather than embrace us for what we actually are which is quite frankly fucking glorious. Hmm. Um, <laughs> I don't like to just complain and do nothing about it. I set up my own online women's magazine. It's called Standard Issue Magazine. Please have a look at it when you get home. Oh, well, bless you. Thank you. Uh, and it's, it, it's for you. It's free and it's for you. And the rule is no bullshit. That is the rule. No bullshit. Because I hate it when women's magazines say things like, we're going to teach you about the thigh gap. And you think, I know what the thigh gap is. It used to be called fucking rickets. <laughs> teach you how to keep a man. I don't need to know how to keep a man. A married one, he's contractually obliged. <laughs> but if this was a film, this would be the bit where there'd be a montage where you'd see how things are improving with my body image. There's no film, but I'll talk you through the montage. I did a few things. The first thing I did, I started to look at my face in the mirror without any makeup on. And I did that a lot, to the point where now, when I look at my face in the mirror without any makeup on, I think... It's just your face. There's nothing wrong with it, which is a huge change for me. Second thing, started to buy clothes online. So no longer do I go into a shop, pick some clothes to try on, take them into a tiny cubicle with an ill-fitting curtain, office lighting, and a fucking circus mirror. 